Uh, my seminar is not about vegetarianism, omnivorism, carnivorism, low carb, high carb. You know, you can do any of these things. I'm just about food quality. I'm going to tell you how to do that better. I don't care. You know, it's up to you. Are you an athlete? Are you trying to lose weight? Are you metabolically deranged? What is your goal? The macronutrient ratio is going to be up to you. And what you eat is up to you. I'm just going to tell you, you know, what good food sources to, to trust. But if you believe this one person called T. Colin Campbell, uh, it turns out that protein is dangerous. In fact, protein is going to give you cancer. And this is something that I have to address and clarify. Here is Colin's book, The China Study. And the China study is based off of data that is in this book called Mortality, Biochemistry, Diet, and Lifestyle in Rural China. There is no correlation. It's not there. He's just playing with numbers. He is, you know, you've probably heard this before. You can make statistics say whatever you want them to say. It's like you throw in confounding variables like that and torture the numbers. You can't. You know, and that's what T. Colin Campbell was doing here. If you look at total cholesterol, however, that is positively correlated to cancer almost all the time and it is statistically significant and by the end of the seminar you'll see why cholesterol is a biomarker like this uh, study here a study of 1408th graders estimates that the fructose consumption from added sugars ranges from 47 to 122 grams per day so again there's a population that is getting close to that amount it's not super unrealistic and I've seen higher levels in other studies and in this one, it estimates about 11 to 12 percent of preschoolers are ingesting more than 25 percent of total energy in the form of added sugars. A quarter of total calories in the form of added sugars. And we wonder why child obesity is increasing. Okay. And then, of course, you know, one thing that's uh, near and dear to my heart is uh, autism, because I've been inv invited to autism conferences, and the, the kids and parents are really in need of help. And it turns out that uh, the hypothesis there is that some of these peptides with opioid activity are getting through in the gut and uh, contributing to the autistic behavior that you see, which would make sense. Like What's going on here? These polyunsaturated fatty acids, they are very sensitive to oxygen. This is something where you need a little bit of an organic chemistry background to figure out. But those skip methylene groups, those CH bonds, you can pluck those readily and form a radical. That radical is going to react with oxygen again to form a lipid peroxyl radical. That is going to react with another molecule of peroxide and propagate the chain, which is a problem. And then it's going to terminate by forming a lipid peroxide, which is then going to get reduced to a reactive oxygen species. All of these radicals are really good at causing cellular damage, DNA damage as well. The majority of the population, you go on a low-fat diet, you're going to lower your cholesterol, but you are switching the profile from pattern A to pattern B. You're heading in the wrong direction. So it's not the total cholesterol that matters. It's like, what kind? No, it's the problematic one that I really want to, to measure and pay attention to. And you're heading in the wrong direction. So these low-fat diets are not the end-all, be-all. They're useful to some, to a, a small majority of the, pa the population, hyper-responders, you know, familial hypercholesterolemia and stuff like that, but not for everybody. They're actually changing the, the phenotype to a, a really bad uh, pattern B. And now what's been shown in this study, they use drugs to lower cholesterol, LDL, just period, uh, all, all of the varieties, to less than 70, and they show that there's still a progression of atherosclerosis. Why? Because they're not paying attention. They're just looking at the, the total number. Right? What you need to look at the pattern. Is it pattern A or pattern B? You need to know. So if you're just lower cholesterol without changing anything else, if you're just playing with variables, you're not going to cure heart disease. I mean, are, are you going to extinguish a fire by turning off the fire alarm? That's what these people are trying to do. They're just playing with the numbers to make the panel look better. But you're not going to change the lifestyle. You need to change the lifestyle to reduce the heart disease risk. This is just playing with the numbers with the drug is not enough, especially when you're not changing the particle size.